All right, welcome inside uh, the Cavalier Insider Studios here, I guess, uh, for uh, a week one preview of uh, UVA taking on Richmond Scott Stadium. 2012 uh, season opener, Andrew Ranspacker, Daily Progress, uh, UVA Cavaliers football beat writer, joined by our uh, sports editor, John Shiflett. And, uh, John, let's get right after it. I guess the, the big decision that, that was made on, on Monday that everybody's going to be thinking about, everybody that's fallen into Scott Stadium, was this the right move uh, at quarterback? It was named, it was Michael Rocco. Um, obviously, there was some competition there between uh, Philip Sims. He was kind of the, the wild card of the group, came in from Alabama, highly touted out of Oscar Smith there in, uh, in, in, in Chesapeake. And looks like Rocco won out. The good thing is, Jerry Ratcliffe doesn't have to eat his column, but uh, is it a good thing for, for UVA right now? I think it is. It gives them some continuity. Rocco started every single game last year. He struggled early in the season when they were trying to mix uh, him and Watford in there. When they gave him the reins, they really took off, won those four games in a row, beat Florida State, beat Miami, beat Maryland. So I think giving him you know, the starting job now will give him a lot of confidence. He's got some good weapons, Tim Smith, Perry Jones. You know, He's got some, uh, some good tight ends. So I think you know it's 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 a good situation for them. You know they've got a good offensive line. So I think the offense can be really really good. Rocco's experience. I think the, a big reason he won that is, you know he knows that offense pretty well now. He's been in it for several years. You know he has that experience over Sims. But the good thing for Virginia fans is is if for some reason Rocco falters, you've got Philip Sims behind him. So you know they're they got some nice depth at quarterback that they didn't have uh, in the recent years. We should mention that, uh, you know, Coach Lennon did mention Monday that, you know, for Sims right now, it's kind of on-the-job training. What will we have seen the last of him because he wasn't named the starter? Not necessarily. I think uh, I think you might see 14 in there this Saturday. It's not into a specific set script, per se. Uh, it's not into the game plan. At least they're not telling us that. So you still might see Sims. Uh, as for Wofford, it looks like the plan is, uh, is to redshirt him. And how do you kind of see that? What do you think? If you're, if you're David Wofford, what are you kind of thinking right now? It's it's got to be kind of awkward because you know you you you're, you played last year and now you're going to redshirt this year. So next year you'll be a sophomore, but you have Grayson Lambert and Matt Johns behind you, and you've got two other kids, Whitey Marshall and the kid from Virginia Beach, coming in the year after that. So you know it's 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 kind of a tough spot. Is he going to play a year? Is he going to switch positions? Is he the quarterback of the future? It's really hard to say right now. There's not a lot of uh, certainty with David Watford future. Hopefully uh, after this year there'll be a little more certainty involved. Another uncertainty, I guess, uh, of this UVA team. We talked about uh, the quarterback situation, which is, I guess, relatively certain in what Rocco can do. The uncertain side is the opposite side of the ball in that secondary. Not a lot of experience. Uh, your kind of elder statesman is a 19-year-old sophomore by the name of Demetrius Nicholson. Everybody else is, uh, is very, very young. You might even see a couple of true freshmen there, Maurice Kennedy uh, and C.J. Moore on Saturday, as early as Saturday. So... You get a little test run with Richmond here. It's an offense with under Danny Rocco. It's going to like to throw the ball a lot. Um, how do you kind of see that 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 playing out? And uh, might not be a problem this this week, but down the line, that uh, you know, it could 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 vote vote against uh, against the Cavaliers secondary. Certainly, playing a team like Richmond's nice early on to kind of get get a, a nice test run in there without being overly overly stressed. You can kind of see what your guys are made of. Get some film on them in a live game situation. Um, I think one thing you would hope. Is that your pass rush, which is which should be more improved this year with Eli Harold and the Mike Moore coming in, can get some more pressure on the quarterback and, and take some of that pressure off of, of the uh, the secondary, so they're not having to you know lock these guys down for four and five seconds. Hopefully, you know it's 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 more something you can disguise if it is a weakness. We don't know that yet, but we, we certainly will know a little bit more after this week and then the Penn State game the following week. Uh, you mentioned the pass rush. That seems to be something that coaches are talking very highly about. They seem to really like what they see in a. Uh, recovering Billy Shouts, obviously that, that injury last year against Florida State seems to be back, running around like a wild man, says Jeff Hansen and uh, you know Jake Snyder. And then I think everybody's really, really excited about this freshman, Eli Harold. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. I talked about Phillip Sims being the, the big newcomer in the team. Eli Harold been pretty much the most impressive during preseason camp. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of stuff about him. Jerry wrote that story about him. He's as fast as some wide receivers and running backs and other skill position players, and he's coming off the edge, you know, tackling the quarterback. He had a really good year last year at Ocean Lakes. He was highly coveted by SEC teams and a lot of uh, premier programs, and it, it looks like he's going to make an immediate impact. And I know a lot of uh, Virginia fans are you know, having, having great thoughts a couple years on the road about Mike Moore, Eli Harold, bookend, defensive line, rushing the passer and really making life miserable for other ACC quarterbacks. But I think he'll make an immediate impact on that pass rush. It's something that uh, Virginia certainly needs with that young secondary. And I guess kind of to, to wrap things up here, we'll kind of 
tie in all that. Got quarterbacks. We got the secondary. We got a pass rush. A little bit on Richmond and that style that Danny Rocco uh, likes to spread the ball around, run some zone read stuff as well. We'll give us uh, a little prediction, I guess. Uh, John, we'll, we'll start with you. I think Virginia wins the game pretty soundly. I'm going to go 42-14 to 14 Virginia. I think the offense comes out, uh, gets rolling early. They're, you know, you've got a, a nice uh, batch of experience there. You'll get in rhythm, uh, get some, some nice experience there. The defense, I think, will contain Richmond, which uh, wasn't strong offensively last year. So I think the Cavaliers come on 42-14 winners on Saturday. I'm going to go with 38-17. Uh, we'll, we'll have Richmond probably score uh, maybe a couple, a couple passing touchdowns, uh, which might be a good thing for the UVA coaches to kind of uh, bring up in those meetings to get some feel for how that secondary is going to react to uh, a passing team. And then on offense, I think Rocco, that, that, that solid, comfortable level uh, really enhances that, that, that side of the ball. And uh, who knows, you might see uh, Philip Sims there at the end in a, in a comfortable win. And I think UVA wins 38-17. And uh, that will wrap it up from, from us. Next time you'll see us, we'll be on the field, right, at Scott Stadium yeah. uh, following uh, UVA's game with Richmond. So that does it here for our week one preview here in Cavalier Insider.